we have something super exciting for today. Axel has a package to open from the crafty ferret business. Um, obviously I know what I ordered but I haven't peeked. I've just set this aside like we are doing with all our packages at the moment. Hi, you got something. Do you want to see? What could be in there for you? You want me to help you? Oh, what did you get? What are those? Wow, you've got a little Cornish pasty. Oh, and a froggy. Oh, you like him. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? So there's like a ball rattle in that one. And then this is a jingly rattle. What have we got here? Okay, cleaning instructions. Oh, you can't see that. Cleaning instructions for the toys. Oh, instructions for the other things I bought. These stickers, awesome. I'm gonna be getting a new car soon. So if they are the right kind that can go in my window, then I shall be showing those off to everybody that passes me by. And then <laughs> she's also included a little, a word search. Oh, and it's got all of the different types of ferrets that you can get. That's what you have to look for. Oh, how funny. And then, oh, it's like a scratch card. Wonder what, okay. And I've done the little scratch card and got 10% off my next purchase, which is so cute. I love all the little extras. Um, also, she does have some brand reps that you can find over on Instagram and they can give you codes for money off as well, which is nice. And yeah, this is the lady's little business card. She's got a lot of cute products for the ferrets, like little toys and bits, and then obviously for humans as well. It says, thank you for shopping at our market night. Yeah, so this was like a small business market night that you um, could access through Instagram and Facebook. And they just had some of the, all of their new products. Um, hope you enjoyed it and love your new crafty ferret item. And she has an Etsy store as well, so you can reach her through a fair few different ways. But oh my gosh, these are so cute. I was really excited for the froggy. <laughs> Look at how cute. I know that's going to end up underneath some pieces of furniture. And how funny. I didn't realise this was going to be this big, which is nice. A little pasty, because why would you not want to see your ferret with a pasty in its mouth? I know he's really going to enjoy these things, and I'm going to enjoy these things. So that's awesome. So this is another quick unboxing that I thought I would add on to the beginning here because you are going to see this product within the video. Um, so I thought I'd have the unboxing in here as a bit of an introduction so you can see how I set it up. Um, if you want to skip ahead you can. But it is a drinking fountain. Um, it was super reasonable and I just thought this is going to be wow. awesome enrichment for him. I'd been looking at them before but just found that they were a little bit too expensive for what they were so I was really happy to find this. This was Axel's first time seeing it and using it and before I could even get the camera ready he was over and drinking from the fountain um, and he really just loves it and he uses it multiple times a day every day. <laughs> So for today's video, as we bumble around a little bit here with Axel, I wanted to go into some of the things that you might be thinking about as your ferret is getting a little bit older. Um, so sort of, how do they play? How can I get them to play? How can I get them to be active? So Axel decided that he needed the litter box at that time, so I decided to just cut it off there because you don't want to see that, and uh, for his privacy. But yeah, anyway, so um, I do get a lot of questions about, I've got an older ferret, what can I do with them? Um, and so I wanted to sort of address that in a video and tell you guys what I have been doing, and perhaps what you can expect, even if your ferret is, is not 
older at this point. Um, and so basically, how can we continue to provide enrichment for older ferrets and um, all the things you can use and the reasons that you might use those items. First off, I should address the cage is, um, as you will have seen in my recent videos, it used to be standing upright like that but it is laying down so that he doesn't have to climb um, the ladders and things like that. Just is less of a risk to him if it's all flat and it's a decent size as it is. But the door is permanently open because he is 24 hour free roam. Um, at this stage, I choose not to cage him whatsoever. And um, the bonus of him, I guess, being older is that he is a little more relaxed and he doesn't insanely try to get into things as much as he used to so that's kind of a bonus but yeah so I have got out uh, an assortment of things to sort of discuss and he has gone off over here what part of you is that that's an arm So he's there, he's asleep. And that is a unused dressing gown. So <laughs> that's the one thing, but I'll go into that more. So basically, when we're thinking about how do I play with an older ferret, instead of thinking about toys, I like to use what I would describe as objects of interest rather than toys. That's because their play style is no longer instinctual hunting, fighting, wrestling, biting, all of that sort of hyperactivity. Their activity now is more exploring and experiencing items. There's going to be, I mean, if I were to, at this point, um, not when he's asleep, but when he's awake, if I were to start hand wrestling with Axel, um, like he would love that a few years ago and you could like pick him up and chuck him onto the bed and he'd bounce and he'd love it. He would actually be quite offended if I did any of that with him right now. So rough housing is pretty much off the table um, in his preferences, if, if not only in the fact that you want to be gentler on the body at this stage. So, um, and yeah, there's no sort of hunting and attacking his little mice and things like that. Um, less ducking even and war dancing is nearly off the table at this stage. And none of these things mean that he's unhappy in any way. It's just that he has a different way of going about things. And that's okay. What I like to focus on with his enrichment and the items that he has out to interact with is stimulating the senses, so not so much taste because that's just food, but um, so his vision, sounds, touch and textures, even smells um, I like to use where possible. And a lot of the time his enrichments are to do with locomotion, what can he travel through and move himself around. Um, so an awful lot of our items are still applicable, the things that you will still use now. I'll show you and talk about what things might be appropriate to carry on into old age. Whereas your sort of um, wrestling toys and maybe your, your wand dangling toys, your chasing active sort of toys, they may no longer be used very much. So first of all, I guess addressing the sort of visual, um, things with like lots of colour, things that are visually appealing, you will already know what your ferret thinks about certain items. So like, obviously, like, they're going to be motivated if they see a tunnel to go through it. In terms of colour, if you're interested, um, the, the colour that ferrets see best is red. So they may be more attracted to red objects than other colours sounds as well for the senses i mean we've got the t <laughs> we've got the good old piano um crinkle toys obviously like this nice crinkle hide crinkle tunnels crinkle everything bells obviously not that he would sort of attack that at this stage but i mean it makes noise some of these as well um he loves things that are noisy but um Thinking about these sort of toys previously, whereas he may sort of fight with them a bit, now he loves to organise them. So some of these are his particularly, what I would call his high value toys. So your ferret will have probably five to ten items that they 
are obsessive over and they think it always needs to go in a certain place. This is um, sort of something that they can still carry on doing into old age. So what I like to do is leave them out in the middle of the room and then he puts them back in his stash where he thinks they belong. So that's something that he still definitely loves to do. So your really high value toys that your ferret has always been obsessed with, their sort of core favourite toys, they're still going to be in the mix because they still like to interact with those. Sometimes he just gives them a shove and walks away and he just likes to smell them all, pick them up, put them down and stash them. So they're still good. And so like touch as well for sensory. Obviously we're going to have different textures here in all the different tunnels. We've got paper things. This is a bag full of shredded paper. And to encourage them to interact with anything, this will work. Just throw some of their like nice healthy treats in there, like dry treats, not wet treats. Um, and enrichment puzzles as well. That's going to be, I guess, to do with taste. <laughs> and smell as well. They're going to get to smell those foods and treats that you put in there, sniff them out, find out where they are. And also for smell, this, I've got to address this, yeah. So this, <laughs> this is a toy replica of my fiance's family beagle and he obviously doesn't live with us so we have the toy here for this so this is toy toby and he's actually wearing a real um dog collar from the real dog and so bringing in scents like that like axel was very confused and interested when he found this and he loves to sniff that collar And it's just, you know, stimulating the senses like that. It's adding interest to his day. A lot of these things just about adding interest. He loves robotic toys. So with the, I got this for $2.99 from B&M and it is an awesome, it's a cat toy. And you can just switch it on and it walks. So you can still use things like this, but just don't expect them to go too mad about it. With this one, he likes to basically follow it until it bumps into something. And then he'll just sort of, oh. And then he'll just sort of sit there and bite it, maybe pick it up and carry it somewhere. So, I mean, he's not going to have a full on wrestling session with it, but it's still something that is interesting to him. These baby sort of activity centres are great. You can hang any toys that you like off there and it's comfy and squishy as well. Sleeping enrichments are really important for ferrets um, at all times, but, you know, especially during these times when they're going to sleep even more. So lots of comfy bedding options. Obviously, he likes the dressing gown there. Piles of blankets and stuff are always good. That leads me on as well. Like, so your laundry, when you change your bed, before you put your bedding in the wash, put it all in a big pile in the corner of a room. It's already dirty, it's gonna be going in the wash anyway. Let them rummage through that, that's gonna be great fun. You can hide toys throughout it, you can hide treats throughout it. Um, and so like under pieces of furniture, again, you can see there we've got more tunnels. We've got um, a little tent there with bubble wrap in it. Again, that's good for textures and sounds. They love bubble wrap. With everything I'm going to mention, obviously, I use my common sense when using items with my ferret, and I would expect that you do the same. There's not a lot of point in, I mean, making certain comments like, oh, but he could suffocate in the bubble wrap. It, it, use your own judgment. I am confident that nothing is going to happen to him as a result of the objects that I use with him. Everybody loves to jump on... <laughs> some previous videos where I've used styrofoam packing peanuts um, in dig pits and things like that. Obviously, I'm only using the biodegradable, non-toxic, water-dissolvable kind that are just made of cornstarch so they're not harmful to the body if they do get ingested. Everything you use, just have an, an idea of, of what you can have that's going to be safe and what's not. But use your own judgment you know i've like i've never had a ferret before that has chewed on anything hello have you here he is so 
Axel personally, he has never chewed. <gasps> What's that? What's that? He has never chewed a thing in his life, so I can trust him with more rubbery toys, whereas you might not be able to. But I mean, everybody is an individual, and I would encourage you to think about things, um, these items, in relation to what your ferret is and isn't going to be safe with. With regard to your ball pits as well, whether you want to fill them with safe packing peanuts or with balls or with shredded paper or anything like that, I still do use ball pits, but um, it's good if you have something like a inflatable ball pit or like a paddling pool or something like that because then you can sort of depress one side of it so that for the elderly ferret they are easily able to get in and out of that and then they don't need any help from you. So he's just using one of the feeding enrichment puzzles there. Normally, um, if I'm buying it, I prefer the plastic over the wood because you can clean the plastic easier. But this one's fine just for dry pieces. And this, I'm going to turn this on. So I've had it turned off for the video because it does make a little bit of a sound. But look at that. And so this isn't necessarily something that he's going to like quote unquote play with, but it's like a very sensory item. He loves to drink from it. And like it literally, if I have this on, he does not, there's not a time when he will walk by it without having a drink. So it's obviously good for his hydration as well. Um, but yeah, it's visually stimulating, makes a sound. Um, and obviously the cold texture on his face and paws if he puts them in there. Um, so that's something, oh, it's really, it's meant for cats, but. <laughs> He prefers it and he's having a little go in the paper bag there um, and that was really cheap that was 12 pounds from B&M when they're normally like 25 or so and again just thinking about when you buy things this packaging provided that you've sanitized it and whatever is now something that he can use that is a piece of packaging that I've used as a foraging toy because it's got big divots in it you can drop dry treats in there um, cat trees are good, he really likes to do his claws, he doesn't climb a whole lot anymore. And as you can see he's just enjoying all of the things that he has out here. And just speaking a little bit about managing your expectations as well. So um, you can't expect that when they get older they're going to do the same amount of things or <laughs> the same intensity of things that they were doing a few years ago. And different ferrets may reach this stage at different ages. Um, obviously Axel has a couple of illnesses and he's seven years old. Some um, ferrets may be starting to mature greatly at around five years old. Um, or some can start maturing at around nine to ten years old. Um, and it just, it just depends, again, individual differences. And you can see everything in the cage is very easy for him to access. He does have puzzles and things to keep him entertained, but there is um, very easy access, food and water available if that's what he chooses because he does need to keep his blood sugars nice and steady. So in general, you can expect shorter periods of activity. Um, so when they do start to come out and play and explore items, just they're going to be doing that for shorter periods of time, obviously longer time sleeping. So whatever your ferret has slept previously during the day in terms of hours, add an extra two or three hours sleep time on that. And that's pretty much what you can expect. Um, your enrichments as well, you want to be gentler on the body. Um, what you can expect of them or what you can even allow them to do because I have a king size bed but Axel still um, has the tendency to get up there with me and then try to jump off even though he does have he did have a ramp on either side so I've now taken that away and I sleep on a mattress on the floor with him so that that doesn't put him at risk and he can be close to me and everything that he wants to be without risking any of that sort of jumping and, and possibly hurting himself. So they may even still think that they can do certain things that 
are not good for them to do and so you may even be managing their expectations of themselves and just bearing in mind that all of this is normal like when your ferret is younger and you think about this stage in life like it can be a sad but i promise you once you're in it it's really not and with illnesses as well it's very daunting when your ferret is diagnosed with something but once you're in it and it's your day-to-day -day life that you live i promise you it's really not that bad you can only do the best you can so uh, a positive that i would end on is that in older age it is definitely true that they like more cuddles and attention affection just nice gentle times of holding them and they groom you and you can like pet them and more and stuff like that that's definitely something that I and a lot of other people that I know have experienced. So the older years are definitely the more cuddly years, whereas when they're little and they just want to run around and rip everything's head off and bite you. So, <laughs> Also, if you're watching this because um, your ferret is older at the moment and you're seeing signs of them sort of starting to slow down, leave their age in the comments below um, if you know it, if they're not like a rescue. Well, Axel is a rescue, but I was told that he was one when I acquired him, so that was make him seven right now but yeah if you've got like a ferret that's slowing down a little bit leave their age because i would be really interested to see the age range that this information is sort of appropriate for so hopefully that has helped and it's given you perhaps a few ideas to use with your older ferrets if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments below so thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time